Are we getting too ahead of ourselves with the Pat Mahomes, Tom Brady in the same category as, say, the GOAT? Are they, you know, because everyone's throwing the GOAT word around. Chris Mano, uh, are you going to break it down for us? Let me know what you think in terms of, like, uh, are we, is, is this too soon? Um, is, is, is this just, like, is Tom Brady's legacy already set in stone, or is Pat Mahomes sort of, kind of, catching up to him? Well, absolutely not as too soon, but there are layers to it, all right? So stay with me. Okay. Through six seasons, they don't, even, they don't just stack up comparably. Mahomes actually stacks up favorably with, with, Mahomes, with uh, Brady, who's unquestionably the GOAT at this point, right? right. Yep. Uh, leads him in win-loss, leads him in playoff win-loss, leads him in AFC titles, leads him in pass touchdowns and picks. Of all the major categories right now, the only thing Brady leads is in championship rings through six years, and that could change come Sunday of next week. Of course. Right? The thing Brady has over everybody, and this is what makes him so just unquestionably great, is longevity. Yeah. So it seems like Mahomes kind of been doing it for a while now, right? For He's sure. Have to, he would have to do it another 17 years at this level to do what Tom Brady did. I mean, Obvious, it- obviously, I'm sorry, obviously in a passing league, he's set up if he can do it for the long haul to kind of make a run at all these records. But I mean, when we thought he wasn't Brady wasn't going to be touched, and, and I was right there with you. No, we're never going to see this again. Yeah. I mean, Pat's Pat's making a run. The first six years, as good as about as good as you can get. Right. He came in for Drew Bledsoe when he got hurt. He held down the fort, and and then they won it right away. So for, yeah. So the first let's see the first regular season are uh, through the first six seasons. Mahomes seventy two and twenty two, and Brady right. seventy and twenty four. Right. So I mean, fourteen and three in the playoffs for Mahomes yep. versus twelve and two for Tom. Gotcha. Two eighty-eight to one sixty-seven in touchdown passes, and he leads him in uh, eighty-seven to sixty-nine in picks, where he's throwing the ball exponentially more in today's NFL. Right. So that's a big one if you kind of like really dig into him. He's throwing the ball so much more, yeah. yet he throws less picks. So he's very safe with the ball, and he's very efficient with what he's doing. Yeah. Ray, what do you think? You think it's too early to say Mahomes is is on the trajectory of of Tom Brady, or you think it's it's pretty dead on? It, it might be right now, I feel like, because if you look at Brady's career right now, he aged like fine wine, and he got better. <coughs> yeah, he you got could better even looking, say, too. Yeah, you could just see him yeah. progressing through the years, and Brady was actually on Pat McAvee's, and he did a Fox Sports analyst, and they asked him, you know, the comparison between Mahomes, and he even said, he goes, he you know, proclaims that a lot of his success was from Bill Belichick and going through the improvements moving forward in his career. Now, you want to question, does Patrick Mahomes have that same relationship with Andy Reid to have that progression moving forward in his career? Right. It's a, you know, it's a solid question to kind of like look into, but I don't think it's out of the picture right now. This, uh, what is it, next Sunday? Yeah. is going to be a big test to see if we could start putting that into the GOAT status with Brady. Go ahead, Chris. And, and, that's, and that's another thing that, that Pat does have in his corner is Belichick's like notoriously a defensive guy. Right. Andy Reid is like a masterful offensive mind. Mm-hmm. So to be able to have that guy, he's got – he. Andy Reid is about six years younger than Bill right now. Yep. So he's got a nice – he could have another six, eight solid seasons left and – yeah, the numbers, they're going to rewrite the history books. These yeah, because guys. I was thinking, too, because um, <clears throat> Bill Belichick right now is looking for a head coaching job. Andy right. Reid's going on his fourth Super Bowl. Right, mm-hmm. right. So what does that say? Because I know you said, what did you say, Tom Brady and Pat McAfee? Uh, for, for, the, for the coaching aspect of it in terms of uh, Brady you know, having his success was right. because of Bill Belichick. And Brady holds a lot of his success to Bill Belichick and the New, the New England pa- Patriots. Right. So... But why do you think it's so hard for Bill Belichick to find a head coaching job right now? Because him and, and uh, Rabel don't have head coaching jobs, and I feel mm. like those guys would be prime time well, picked off already. I would love to see Vrabel on the on the oh, oh, for sure. Well, isn't it, it. isn't it so interesting? Like, that's been the discussion since Brady and Belichick broke. Like, was it Brady? Was it Belichick? And it's almost like you could see the front offices around the league are telling you what they think, right? The fact that he's not hired. Right. What I think has a lot to do with the reason he hasn't really signed on with anybody yet, too, is he's not a guy who's going to come in there and take orders from a GM or a president or anything. Like, where he goes, he's going to be the guy. So he's got to go to a place that's willing to fork over full control. Control. I know the, the Dallas Cowboys have been kind of like in the in the papers. Yeah. Will Jerry Jones be willing to bring him in? That's something that I thought immediately of. Damn, Jerry Jones is that guy. He he likes to have his hand in the in the recipe. So of course, but for, also Mike McCarthy's not going anywhere. At least not this year. Uh, I yeah. thought he was real close this year. I mean, how many times can you be first seed or two seeds and go out in the first round? I don't know. Micah Parsons says on his podcast, he says I think that we're going to do everything we can to make all the necessary moves to get to the Super Bowl. And I'm like, what does that mean? Because obviously Dak is not the guy. How many times I got to tell you guys this? He's not the guy. He's garbage. 
How many times would you give Dak a chance? You know, Dak says. Also, Mike McCarthy, by the way, I'm sorry, but Mike yeah. McCarthy has been to the Super Bowl. I mean, get that. Wouldn't he be like, oh, Dak's not the Ooh. effing guy? All right, anyways. <laughs> sorry. So upset. I'm, I'm telling you, dude. Thank it's you. either that or Chicago. Venting. What? You're venting either about that or Chicago. Don't do it. Listen, we're trying to have a good show. All right, this is Chris's first show. We don't want to screw it all up. Because if you get me on a Chicago rant, I swear to God, I'll clear this desk and we'll have some words. Anyways, I'm sorry. I think I had too much vault. All right, moving on. Moving on. Whatever. It's fine. We're good. Everything's great. Uh, why don't we? But also, why don't we talk about Joe Montana? In between, uh, why do we forget about Joe Montana? The guy won four Super Bowls. Prisoners I mean, of the he, moment, man. We're prisoners of the moment in sports. But and I think, like, are we that? Are we that? Are we that? Uh, we forgetful about Joe Montana? So, the guy was awesome. So it's that. It's a. It's a lot of like, what have you done for me lately in the league? You know the drill. If you two or three years, you're forgotten. But, but in in the way the game has changed now, I think a lot of people's assumption, and this goes for every sport, is that. The guys back then weren't playing against the same kind of freaks as they're playing against now. So I guess you got to take that into account. So you're uh, saying that they were all slow back then? Uh, I mean, guys like me were playing corner. So, I mean. What? But you know what's funny, too, is back in the day, uh, guys were like, halftime, they were drinking like a six-pack and having a couple smokes. Smoking six, yeah. <laughs> and then heading back out. Yeah, for, the guys smoking a cigarette, they, kicking a field goal. They, <laughs> they, they, they had side jobs. Like, when the season ended, they'd totally. go back and do construction. Yeah, yeah they were cutting the field's crazy. grass. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> During halftime. Yeah. <laughs> so they weren't required to, to escape the pocket and stuff like that, neither. It's, it's more, more times than not, it's the quarterbacks. But some of the photos out there are just outrageous. Yeah. Tons of fun to look at. Well, leading into the Super Bowl, I thought um, you and I were talking about this. How do the roster stack up, you think? Because um, I know we have another week of Super Bowl stuff to digest, but, you know, let's start chewing on that bone a little bit because how do you think? Do you think the Niners stack up with the the Ra or the Chiefs? And, and break it down for me. Yeah, yeah, I don't even – like, I'm, I'm big on – the idea and the premise of like greatness. I love greatness in every field. It of just, course, yeah, I'm just yeah. enamored by it. I of like course, the, these rosters are so loaded. All pros, Hall of Fame level players, Pro Bowlers on both sides of the ball. Right. Uh, everywhere. Best running back in the league. Best quarterback in the league. Best two tight ends in the league. Is Debo Samuel's in? Mm -hmm. Is he in the some sort of Hall of Fame? Um, is, like, is he, in, in is the, he on in a trajectory? Realm. Yeah, trajectory. He's interesting, man. Hall, Hall of Fame at his position is kind of tough. You but he's got a stacked. Lot. He's built. Like, you yeah. see him, he is, he's a yeah. brick shithouse, dude. Yeah. Well, look at, look at that screen right there. I mean, Mahomes is on a trajectory to go to the Hall. Kelsey going to the Hall. Chris Jones on a tra trajectory to go to the Hall. McCaffrey mm -hmm. the Hall. Kittle the Hall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fred Warner's the best linebacker in football. It's like there is, they are so loaded. And it doesn't even end with the skill guys. Right. Like for the real geeks like me who know the rosters and dig in and don't just like look at stats and stuff, you can look down in the trenches. You got guys like Trent Williams, who's the best left tackle of his generation. Right. Freak athlete, if you want to watch him. This guy's like 6'6, oh, yeah, yeah, 320. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he Trent pulls, Williams for sure. Yeah, yeah. He gets down the field and blocks. The, the Chiefs got Creed Humphrey, who's like a perennial all pro at center. Right. which isn't really fun for too many people to watch, but Jason Kelsey's kind of made center cool lately. Yeah. So, guys, mm -hmm. look into everything. There is just all, all types of talent. Everywhere. I'm telling you, I think this game is going to pop such a crazy rating because even if you're like a quasi-fan, everybody's right. heard of Pat Mahomes now, right? And mm -hmm. obviously there's other things I'm sure we'll get into at some point that kind of supersede the game now for people who aren't really fans that are going to pull them in. Yeah. I just think the number they're going to draw is going to be nuts. What do you think? If you're drafting, if you have to draft, you have to draft one or the other, Travis Kelsey or Rob Gronkowski, who are you taking to start your team as tight end? Uh, oh, God. See, I'm a big Kelsey guy. The way the league's going, Kelsey's probably probably more suited to where the league's going. More versatile? And, no, but he's I don't a know, he's, Rob Gronkowski. He's, he can well, catch anything in well, traffic. Well, here's the deal. Well, here's the deal. The reason Gronkowski's not still playing is because every rule has been changed. If you've seen this guy in person, he's like a building with feet, man. The guy is huge. He is. So, so everybody the last couple of years, like you don't tackle a Gronkowski up high. So if you watch all his highlights, every play is a defender turning his head and throwing his shoulders from the knees down. And the way football's changed, where you can't hit a guy high, you, he's he's bound to get hurt and miss a lot of time, which he did. Uh, he's a phenomenal blocker, a way better blocker than Trav. But I think where football's going, where they're trying to gear everything towards the offense succeeding, yeah. because in turn that turns into numbers. I think probably Trav for the long haul. Right. He doesn't get hurt very much at all. You know, not good because I love him and I want him to keep playing. Right, for sure. But um, what do you think? What do you think, right? Who, who are you taking? Yeah, I, I think right now in terms obviously because you're a New England guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. you know, but in terms of how the league is right now, it's more geared towards speed, and you could see Travis having more speed. Gronk like. Chris said is built like a fridge. Yeah, but and he'll be successful in any era. One hundred percent. He's also 
had an immense amount of injuries, and that's why he ended his career, you know, early. Unfortunately, some people yeah, are human band-aids, and he happens to be one of them.